Hello, hello. It is Wednesday, 7.30, and we are Debate Sensei. I am Jared Kubica Miller, communications professor and debate coach. This is Tim CV from Visolutions. Hey. All right, when we got Matt Shapiro, JD. Hello, everybody. All right, excellent. Um, and so today, uh, we're going to be talking about online debate. And considering the situation that we're in, I've, I've been spending like all day working on... Um, this online tournament that we're hosting. And, uh, you know, we didn't get to do our, our debate, but uh, I think that, that we're gonna we're gonna get one set up. And I think it's a really good topic to discuss because there's been a lot of mixed reaction because a lot of people are forced into um, online debating. Yeah, uh, I think- I, Students that give me some feedback and I wanna know if you've gotten any other feedback. There, I think, you know, we can almost separate it into like, I, I wrote down a couple of things for today and like they're kind of grouped between, you know, the unique situation that this, you know, pandemic presents and the, you know, uses for online debate in that context. And then the second would just be, you know, what where does online debate have fit, you know, if anywhere in regular, you know, as we knew it, the world before uh, in that context. So and I think hopefully today we'll kind of explore both of those things. What do you think, Tim? I think under weird circumstances, right, when we're pressured into this, like, there are no tournaments, there are no in-person practices, there is no possibility that you can all get in a room to do the thing. I think that it's been pretty impressive how the entire country has adapted. Like, there are East Coast, West Coast, Midwest nationals, like, tournaments happening all over left and right. It seems to be that most of them are synchronous right like they're happening with live debate and there are some major obstacles that come into that that maybe we can talk about but i've been pretty impressed by just how resilient i guess the community is in their ability to just pick stuff up and there are some new challenges right so this past weekend uh was the cool off at least uh, in southern california and the cool off is this like staple tournament i don't know it's probably its 30th plus year at this point uh that's for new debaters but you still end up with this issue of speed once people start getting, you know, quicker as, as debate goes. And when you have a, a live streamed, you know, communication back and forth, microphones can only pick up so much so fast and video only picks up so much so fast. And there's a, a much lower ceiling at that point to how fast debaters can go. Yeah. I, um, uh, there's, that's one of the reasons we weren't able to get the, the, the asynchronous tournament out because it was just like the, the timeline that you needed. I, I just thought it did a little bit much, but it's looking like we're going to have limited sort of contact even next year, you know? And yeah. so I think that, that next year would be a good time for an asynchronous uh, tournament. Now there's been a bunch of synchronous. I did um, uh, climb the mountain with uh, Jim Hansen up in uh, Washington. And that seemed to go well. Um, my, my students did that and one of my coaches and uh, they did pretty well in that one but uh, one of the one of the pieces of feedback I got from my students was that um, you know there, there's still a pretty good disparity between the, the, the service that people get for their internet yes and right so really kind of like when you're doing synchronous like as far as synchronous um, a, tournaments go they're like that we're not there yet and so that's why one of the reasons I like the asynchronous stuff a whole lot, you know? Yeah, I, I, I want to always take these opportunities to kind of talk about uh, what Jared is discussing for any of you who might not know exactly what we mean when we say asynchronous or synchronous uh, at this point. So a synchronous tournament, um, we, we are talking about an online synchronous debate tournament. We're talking about one that you would imagine that would follow the exact same format. Uh, of a traditional, you know, in-person at a school debate tournament, and uh, with the challenges which that create, and and the biggest challenge that we're talking about is the disparity in internet connection specifically. And what happens is, you know, even as we have this live stream right now, we're all depending on each other's internet access. Uh, and it always works. We've 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 had people drop out in the middle of these things. Yeah, before. exactly. And so and so these types of you know complete technical failures are are. They really hinder the debate, right? I mean, that's just not something that happens generally. So when we talk about asynchronous tournaments, one we're planning on having and, and, and uh, what we're hoping to cultivate in the community generally is a tournament where you do end up recording videos, uh, but you record them directly to a, a phone or a, or a computer. 
we, with no need for the internet up, uh, except to upload files. And uh, asynchronous means that it's not at the same time. And so, so it's not like I am presenting straight to Jared or Tim and they're going to refute it in that immediate second. There is actually days that can go by between yeah. my speech being yeah. uploaded, they watch it, they can actually develop a response much more, uh, you know, you know, uh, they can refute arguments directly if they choose to do extra research in that time. Yeah. And and present a uploaded file which is uninterrupted. Uh, you know, uh, that is the key difference. And so as far as the internet technical problem, how does that solve that problem? That's the kind of why we're trying to foster that uh, in this community. It's not really a thing just yet, but hopefully yeah. we can kind of pull it together, right? Yeah, I, I mean, like, it, we just didn't really have quite the runway, and I didn't want, like, to, to I don't know, my, my plate was full. Don't want to you know? force it. Yeah, we don't want to mess yeah, it you up. Know what I mean? Like, I just, but the, the, the really well, awesome I mean, thing about asynchronous terms is, is that, like, the stages that they go in, right? Yeah. The best thing to do is, is that you go in, in different stages. And so, like, uh, week one would just be the affirmative stage. If everyone has the same topic, they, they submit, like, three affirmatives and that gets paired up with somebody else and they, they watch it and then move on to the cross-examination phase yeah. where everyone is, you know, doing cross-examination. So it yeah. also allows for like higher quality video. Like, like yeah. you're oh, able sure. to yeah. kind of, you can record a, a much better video without the need for streaming. Even the service StreamYard kind of reduces our uh, resolution to a certain amount, right? Like with you, if you have access to just any recording software, you likely can record a much higher quality video. So there are perks to the asynchronous, uh, style. If we can, you know, get it down and, and do it right. Um, these are technical things. You know what I mean? Go, go ahead, Tim. I think the biggest advantage to asynchronous is the lack of communication apprehension. So just removing from the picture entirely the, anxiety that comes with someone just gave a speech i was rapidly taking notes and planning my rebuttals and now i've got to speak i think that's a really big bar to cover or to, to clear for new debaters yeah i mean even people that have been doing it for a while can find a huge advantage in like functionally infinite prep time like the fact that you can go real deep and get every you know answer well cleaned out like every speech can be economical in how you set it up because you've got time to write a really yeah you know, well put together speech and it's research well put together. Hopefully it raises that bar too. It really goes up. So yeah, it's difficult because it takes much longer, obviously, but I think that it really brings another level of quality to a round. Agreed. Yeah. And hopefully it raises the bar. Like if yeah. you have that extra time, then, you know, you sh the, the bar is higher. You know what I mean? Uh, I, I was going to say, you know, like one thing, you know, that kind of transcends, you know, the pandemic context that i kind of wanted to bring up at some point i'll just do it now you know in the future you know uh in a world where like you could record uh, at your school for instance right like maybe even sitting next to a partner like you two yeah. could be in a room together uh one thing i noticed that may a lot of people kind of have a hard time with which uh you know is like the background like where are you in these yeah. in these contexts right you put a suit on and in your kitchen you see your cat walking around like <laughs> it's, it's it's cool first of all and in, in right now because it gives us some alternative. Like I, at that point, it's like I'd rather that. I mean, how? What's the what's the formality of a classroom anyway? It's as good a place mm -hmm. as anywhere, right? But I like how in the future I kind of envision, you know, every squad room to have kind of like their little, uh, essentially a recording studio. And like when you want to film, uh, if you wanted to go hit, you know, Harvard tomorrow, and you're at SEC and you're in the middle of Orange County, you know, maybe you could facilitate that debate you know, in a very professional way, using your school's, you know, uh, uh, facilities, uh, uh, representing your school. And that type of remote access, you know, uh, finances is the biggest thing. Many coaches, many teams know exactly what I'm talking about, where that is the real limiting factor, right? So if you could, if you can have access to big tournaments with big name schools, uh, that would be cool because it kind of levels the playing field in certain you know, areas like an online tournament and hopefully, you know, someday it'll, we can increase the number of debates happening with these types of, you know, institutions. So Tim, hey, Tim, have you had any students that have done um, online debate tournaments since the pandemic? Specifically yes, I have students that did both. Uh, they did synchronous and asynchronous tournaments and had some real like interesting pros and cons. Um, funny enough, actually, the final round of uh, the, the cool off the most recent tournament the topic was um, whether traditional 
classrooms or uh, adapted online learning was preferable. So it's, it wasn't a clean fit, but I just thought that it was pretty like beautifully meta that you had yeah. these debaters in a, uh, a synchronous but remote setting debating that. Uh, but I, I think there were a lot of, of real challenges as well as benefits that came to it. So uh, for example, limited prep in every tournament, that's like the challenge to limited prep is that you have no time, right? You've got two minutes in the case of impromptu or 30 minutes in the case of extemp. But as soon as for our tournament, at least someone gets 24 hours, the number of people willing to come to the plate increased. And at least from what I mean, everything that we've seen in the back end of the tournament, I think the quality was better, too, because you got several takes at it. So there just are fewer flubs. You can really plan out your points. And I know that that's not the point. Like there is still absolutely value to a real off the cuff speech. But I think that it's really interesting, the new value that's added to an asynchronous model that way, where synchronous, I think there were some real challenges. Like one of our debaters won a round because his competitor's internet glitched out and they couldn't repair it. Like that sucks. Oh, like, yeah. There you go. You got it. But like, you know, like that's, that's a bummer. That shouldn't happen yeah. in, you know, uh, an actual round. So I like the stability that asynchronous affords as an alternative for things like that. Uh, if I want to jump in right here, I mean, one thing I want to make very clear, I know all of us agree on is like, we, none of us think that, an online debate will ever, you know, usurp a uh, uh, debate, right? Like no one's saying that this is the way, the only way it should be. No. Uh, and it's really more of like, do you want to look at some uh, developing some of these other skills as well? And like, I'm of the opinion where like, we should encourage all sorts of learning. And even if it's not exactly what you kind of thought debate was like, don't, don't get turned off to the idea that this is kind of something we adopt into our into our community not dominate just like as soon as we can get back to you know business as usual we're going to be back at schools competing but but uh this the, this format I do, I do believe develops skills in students that transcend debate i mean in law right now for instance you know long before the coronavirus there were already electronic you know means of communications to develop you know to 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 do things professionally and so and so as job interviews increase using this type of stuff as you increase using this in your work life and your employment and meetings like these are skills that you learn in debate just like all kinds of other skills you learn in debate which transcend debate and those are things that you may take with you long after you know uh you're done competing or you're judging or coaching whatever it may be so yeah i think one of the, the awesome parts about the online environment is is how it starts teasing out the central parts of debate and, and kind of contrasting what isn't central. Like the ability to come up with an answer within 10 seconds, while impressive, you know what I mean? Like it's not absolutely necessary, like in, in a particular, you know, like as far as life skills are concerned, you know, and like um, while that might be useful in a whole lot of circumstances, the ability to come up with something within 24 hours is still pretty darn good. You know what I mean? It's like. Definitely. Yeah, you know, and, and so like that sort of like it, they they still sounded like impromptus. You know what I mean? They yeah. still had that sort of personality off the cuff, last minute type of thing that that, um, that you're used to. But uh, for for debates, like especially asynchronous debates, um, like the 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 limited amount of, of prep time is a result of of trying to have tournaments on the weekends, not a result right. of have better debates. You know yeah, what I mean? Right. Like, wasn't it's like you know what would make this better is if we limited the time it's like now like it was that's logistics that's not like a, a central part of the philosophy of debate and so when you don't have that requirement like an asynchronous debate i think like it starts exposing some of the things that that works and, and that's where it's like do you want to turn yourself off to this other like like it requires people it requires old dogs to learn some new tricks i mean that's the right. truth like it's not it's not exactly what you've always known of course. I mean, that's that and, and technical difficulties like Internet speeds and stuff like that are now something you have to account for. And 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 like on one hand, like I like debate exactly how it is. And I don't necessarily wish that it just would change fundamentally in any horrible way. But like I also don't I'm not scared, at least of encumbering some of this new knowledge that I'll have to make. Right. To, to kind of uh make this type of debate happen because it's just inevitably going to be here and it's not only you know it's a resource for for com competition it's a resource for you know practice it's a resource for just increasing the number of debates you do 
in a year uh, or whatever time frame you're working with. So, right. I, I don't and know. I, so, go ahead, Tim. I think to that point, right? Like, so you made a, a point a second ago saying teams eventually may have their corner. That is where they do you know, recording. Yeah. I think in terms of developing new skills, yeah. that's, I think, really valuable. And some teams have been adopting that for a while. So, I mean, talking about old dogs and new tricks, Jared, you've been doing video with your team for debate as well as speech events for a long time. How have you integrated that? Like, what does what video look like as you've seen it for recording speeches for prep or, I mean, you well, know, it's it's funny, it, like it, it, it moves with the technology. At first I had, you know, them doing recordings and, and throwing them to DVDs, um, you know, like just having, having yeah. you know, just holding their own debates outside of class. And then I realized that, you know, if I had the equipment that took the burden off of like finding it amongst them, their classmates. And so then I, you know, I flipped the class. So there's more debates in class where I'm using that. Equipment. What do you mean by flip class, Jared? And like where they, the, the debates, the class time is for homework, which are your debates, whereas at home is, is time for your lectures, which is what you traditionally do in class. So we have a bunch of um, lectures that are recorded that are in a classroom format. Um, and it's like basically like a, a video textbook um, for sure. Students. And um, in class, they are debating in separate yeah. rooms with the cameras, so you can kind of judge all right. of them at once. Right, and they, they, they just they produce files and, and, and upload them to YouTube and submit those links for, for their assignments. Um, See, I think in a post-corona world, I think that that can be a much bigger standard. Like, everyone had to figure out, just you know, do or die, had to figure out online education right now. Every class that's functioning had to figure this out, and so many more teachers now are being asked to record their lectures so that there can be a flipped classroom. I think the demand has been there for a long time, but there hasn't been enough of a push to do it. So I think that with this new demand, of, as more teams come to see it viable, I could see that being a really useful piece of the puzzle. I mean, even with the value of recording a speech and seeing it back, like it's better than you know all the teams that have mirrors in their room. So the students like introverts can get practice their character pops. Like if you can see your entire speech start to finish, how tremendously valuable. And I think, as you were saying before, like the bar to entry just becomes equipment. I got my setup pretty cheap. I don't know about you guys. Like I know that the costs are going down to make this stuff realistic. Like you can do this with a webcam and like headphone mics and some lights. Yeah, the entry, like cost of entry is pretty low, like, but there is a, a fairly big difference in quality as long as like we are very aware of that, you know what I mean? I think being conscious and, and talking about the you know, difference in quality um, and how that might influence people is something that you just got to confront. But uh, uh, on the other hand, it it, gain, it gives access to people that don't have access. Sure. Uh, in you particular, they got travel, right? Like they just don't have the budget to travel to tournaments. But more than that, like we got people with disabilities um, sure. and uh, people who are uh, trying to get, like get out of prison. Um, yeah. get There's a million reasons why someone can't make it somewhere. I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, so like, it, I think I think if we think in more in terms of how online debate serves um, an audience, uh, and, and some of those audience members aren't served by debate right now, then like, I think it's a, it's a very positive thing. You know, um, it's not a replacement at all. Yeah. It's not a replacement. And, 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 you know, something that, you know, we're, we're kind of something I was thinking about, you know, I'm very idealistic, like the rest of us out here. Um, one thing that's really cool is like, there's even a possibility where if schools really kind of got into like developing a little space for their team to compete, there could be some like interdisciplinary, you know, uh, uh, help here. Like, you know, there are, there are, uh, journalism and you know photography departments there are all sorts of departments on campus that are like experts at this so yeah, you I know, didn't even think about that yeah that's if, a great idea if there's ways to like facilitate uh interdisciplinary you know you know classroom assignments where you have debaters debating and you have photographers shooting video with good cameras like there are just ways to kind of develop this skill of you know on camera either speeches or debates or just any sort of, you know, it's a different feel. It's a different feel than in a room with a judge or full of an audience, you know, sure. but, but nonetheless, you know, if, if hundreds of people are watching or if you're at a, you know, a big tournament someday in the future, 
it, it doesn't change the fact that like you want to look professional. You want to look the same reason why we wear a suit is the same reason why you try to get your video to look as good as you can and for your audio to sound as good as you can. Like you're yeah. trying to present yourself in this way. And Jared, you know, we're talking about, you know, one very important thing is a good win a debater who's got the merits down. It shouldn't matter how their camera looks, right? That we're, we're, yeah. we agree that sure. like the winner should win. Yeah. But, but there is an aspect of this kind of communication where people are looking at you and people are seeing what the screen shows. So where, you know, post-corona, when we're not all necessarily working off of our phones, you know, that type of stuff may be, you know, honestly fa factored into an even round and like should maybe be looked at as part of the performance, just like a suit or something like that. Well, I wanted to transition this into a little bit more into the philosophical or... Sure realm um where like i think with all the advancements in technology it, a lot of people assume that we should always go faster and i kind of have a different opinion what do you mean by go it. faster i don't mean I don't, that, 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 that we should that, that production should speed up that um you know content like content production should just you know, just exponentially increase um that we should be more efficient workers and stuff like that and i think that like with our better technology we should get the reward of slowing down a little yeah. bit. You know what I mean? It's like reward ourselves by like like indulging in a little bit of extra time to prepare. I mean, the difference between like four minutes of prep time and twenty four hours or four days. Yeah, I mean, like a week. Like, yeah, I, I like the idea. Like because the, going back to what I was talking about about how like it, it challenges some of the central tenets of, of debate. A lot of people win by doing trickery, right? Yeah. Things, yeah. You know what I mean? And it's like, if you had 24 hours to look at it and talk to somebody about it and get some advice and everything like that, it wouldn't be all that impressive. And every every debater has walked out of a round and three to 10 minutes later been like, oh, I should have said this. Yeah, you know what I mean? Right. And I, I think, yeah. you know, Jared, like, I don't think necessarily think it's a dichotomy, right? I don't think you can either do one or the other. I don't think one is right or the other. I think, you know, what we're really talking about is developing different skills, you know, like, like, yes. A debater, we want them to be in a conventional sense, quick, uh, right off the uh, right off the cuff, live in the flesh, you know, in that second to develop a response. Uh, but what we're kind of talking about is, it, it's also good. It's also good to like have this other style where you time is not necessarily the factor. The factor is your creative mindset and your process and your work ethic into listening to what someone said and developing the best case you can against it. It reminds me, I, I don't mean to hog the time, but I just want to, it reminds me of like how in LD or policy, how when you have year long uh, uh, debates, you know, you're, your case kind of changes and your responses kind of change because you get attuned to what people say. Now, this is like a hyper sped up version of that where like you kind of go into a round with your idea of what you want to do. But it may be to where in the in the days between uh, rounds, uh, uh, sorry, in the days between speeches, you may go research a bunch of stuff and develop a bunch of dis ads you didn't rest, you didn't necessarily know about until after, you know, they for the first speech was read and like it, it, it's it's interesting to just kind of allow a uh, super in-depth response because you're right jared that sometimes it's all about just kind of getting someone off their guard and having kind of someone have an emotional response to where they can't respond very well all of a sudden and like this does remove that this is like gonna let you record three or four times if you wanted to to get your perfect speech out for the other team now to to, to, to have to deal with I could see it happening alongside debates though, right? So at a debate tournament, there's a separate division. So pattern D or whatever is video submissions. And that's, I mean, it's already happening a little bit. Like I know uh, at the middle school level, like Willie Washington, his tournaments now for the last several years have had a writing submission and have had a video submission. So for students that knew in advance, they wouldn't be able to make it to the tournament. They could film their speeches and submit it and they'd be judged against the other speeches. Like that's, pretty ahead of the curve. And I could totally see that happening. I think there's so many students that are super impressive competitors and would do very well, you know, competitively, but don't have the opportunity to make it to a tournament for any yeah, one. Like, there's so many religious holidays that fall on tournament. Mm. Yeah. It is like, uh, I had like people who, um, were uh, observing the Sabbath, and they're like, "Well, I can't, you know." It's like, "Sorry, <laughs> they like can't come on Friday." You know what I mean? It's like, hey, "Come on Saturdays." And um, the uh, the so the flexibility, like that that 
that flexibility, I think, fits uh, the sort of like multiple human sort of lifestyles. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, yeah. Um, that that's why we should like indulge. You know what I mean? It's like if we have the technology that lets us slow down debates, be more contemplative. You know what I mean? Like you know, like reshoot them several times to work on the delivery. I think yeah. that's a good thing, man. I think we should. Yeah, I I, I definitely want to cultivate that. It's a good thing. Just like off the cuff responding is a good thing. Like yeah. they're they're, yeah. they're both good. It's not it's well, not like, one. Of, like in chess, in chess, there's speed chess, right? Where you have to do it within a certain time limit, right? Yeah. And there's this there's open ended, and and so this is almost like open ended. You still have to have some sort of deadline because it's a different thing. But yeah, you know it, that that's why. An asynchronous tournament will take anywhere between like five and nine weeks yeah. to do. You know what I mean? And and so and, and you just gotta constantly have people on you know on a schedule and moving them through and have uh, you know backup plans for people drop out halfway through. What you do stuff like that. You know, like it, but it's doable. I've been doing it in my class for for like five years now. And it's not all scary. I mean, what's so funny too is, is like, I have a note on here where like, even this microphone, we were talking about it for the thing, like use what you got, right? Like I, I this microphone, I got this like four years ago for, I'm a, I play, in, I play live music sometimes. This microphone's used for live music. You know, I thought that uh, came from the rock band, like the Xbox game. This probably like, is the exact nice. same microphone in the, in the rock game, in the rock, st- uh, I forget the name. What's the, what's the game? Rock band. Guitar the game? Hero. There Guitar you go. Hero. Yeah. Anyways, my point is just like, you know, if you have it, some people out there right now, you know, you're really into tech, your audio files, you have a bunch of stuff at your house. Like this is kind of a way to enjoy that stuff too. I mean, like it's, you know, uh, I, it's not for everybody. And like I said, it's minimum stuff is required. So it's all just kind of like, it's a, a method for us to kind of use some of these things and these tools that we develop often outside of debate, but we can use them here. And like yeah. that, these philosophical discussions like Jared's talking about, you know, they are good discussions and we should always flush out the best way to handle things and ha- the best way to accomplish the goals we set out, you know, but, but don't be scared that like, we're trying to, to usurp debate. Like that's not the, that's not the goal here. And it's, it's only a way to kind of uh, do more debates, which is what, you know, so many of us who like to compete and judge and coach, you know, that's the goal is to get as many of these in as we can. I'm interested in seeing the like the level of artistry in debate, sort of what it, what asynchronous debate can do for that. Because now that you can like reshoot it a number of times and get your you know being pick and choose what the, the most important arguments are, you think you know I mean really strategize like you can. But the, you, need you can... To, the need to speed, the need to to, to, to talk really fast. I hope like I, I might be wrong, but goes down. You know what I mean? Well, I think transcription becomes another useful one. So, like, Jared, you and I, over the course of this summer, we did an asynchronous debate of uh, the Lincoln-Douglas topic, right? Mm -hmm. Or, I guess, geez, that was last year. And the ability to transcribe a speech that comes into you. So you have a literal word-for-word document, like, flowing, that is a core element of debate right now, fundamentally shifts when you get a word-for-word transcript of what the other person said. It's not like misinterpretation or I meant to say or whatever. Like, no, nah, these are the hard words that were said. And now you can use those to label the arguments. You can pick out with a fine tooth comb any fallacies, any gaps in the argument, any lack of warrant. And then you can you know, go nuts on that. So I think the, the downside to it is that it could make debate even more consuming than it is. Like yeah. I, when debaters get into it. They also have math class. They also get, have science. Know, like, yeah. really spend some time on it. Yeah. And now it's like, well, hey, I've, I've got, you know, a week's worth of research that's going to go into this baller speech in like three days of, of production and post to make this thing like super polished. I don't think that's going to be the case right out the gate, but like interesting. It, I wonder if that's like where it would end up getting to where students are Tim, spending. I'll tell you the truth. Debate. debate, forensics community in general, like it takes a certain type of student to sign up for this. And yeah. I mean, you sat the amount of, you know, GPA or you know units you get never equate to how much time you put in and whatever sacrifices you choose to make is really on the student and the coach to kind of some sort of you know you know oversight but but the, uh, I wouldn't be too scared of that and and, and it, you know for all you debaters out there that is a good lesson where it's like you have other classes <laughs> and you have other commitments yeah. like you can't like just dedicate your whole life to this if you have 
other commitments. But like you can dedicate all the time you can, and you get much more efficient with 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 ex- with practice and stuff like that. You know, on the last one of the last notes I wanted to hit on here, this is the one thing I also have noticed about online debates. A lot of students themselves have made their own tournaments, and I think that like. Uh, that's very cool, first of all, just because it's okay. like, go out there and do it. But the other side is, you know, there's a little bit of, we need to establish some legitimacy, I think, in, in, in online debate. And uh, that requires, you know, very strict, uh, not strict, but like very streamlined protocols for how to do it and systems to manage it to where it seems very, very real and very important, just like you feel at Nats. I mean, in that, that, that level of care needs to rise. And so the... By hopefully we can create some systems that really increase the legitimacy and streamlining the process to make these things happen. And that's kind of what debate sensei is really all about as far as, you know, uh, online debate. Yeah. All right, everyone. Hey, that's our time. Uh, catch us next week. Talk about a different subject. Okay. Uh, we'll see you later. Thank you, everyone. Uh, I'm Jared Kavika Miller. This is Tim Seavey from Visolutions. And we got Mash Shapiro JD. All right. Thank you, guys. See you next week.